listen, my, uh, my name is uh, Kenny Patrick, and I wanted to tell you about the immense, uncontrollable pride that I have in what I do for a living. Uh, I'm a pipe fitter, and pipe fitters are a lot like doctors. They serve an apprenticeship, and then they tend to specialize. And some specialize in huge underground gas lines that run here from Texas and Louisiana. And others specialize in big boilers like we have over at the powerhouse. But personally, I've always specialized in technologically advanced toilets. Now, I've received a lot of ridicule during my lifetime because of my particular occupation. I've been called a shithouse mechanic and a honey dipper and numerous other, even less complimentary terms. But those people don't fully understand the skill and the training and the pride that we have in what we do for a living. They don't understand the history and the background of the toilet. Let me tell you this, that all of the great civilizations of mankind have been judged according to a few basic criteria. Their art, their military might, their system of justice, and whether or not they've had the proper methods for the elimination of human waste. You see, Genghis Khan and Attila the Hun, they had great armies, but they never had great civilizations. They probably took a crap out here in the cornfield someplace. But the ancient Egyptians used a chair with a hole cut in the bottom and a pot underneath, and the slaves would empty the pot. And then the ancient Romans invented underground sewers, and they had a hole cut in the floor, and they used that. And then the toilet as we know it today kind of evolved. Some made it out of wood and some out of stone and some out of sheet metal. Until in the mid-1800s in London, England, there were toilets of a fashion, but they all leaked and they leaked so badly there was no water pressure, they couldn't fight fires. And then one of our ancestors in our craft, Sir Thomas Crapper, invented the ball cock float valve that goes in the back of your toilet. And he was knighted by the King of England for his service to humanity. Now, I don't know any boiler makers or machinists or electricians or carmen that were ever knighted, but Sir Thomas Crapper was knighted by the King of England. And when Sir Thomas made his marvelous invention, of course, it spread to the United States of America. And the man who's known as the father of the American bathroom as we know it today is Elgin Statler from the Statler Hotel chain. And in 1908 in Buffalo, New York, Elgin Statler built the world's first hotel with a private bath for everyone. He had a slogan, a room and a bath for a dollar and a half. Now he didn't really invent anything, but what he did, he figured out the idea of putting the stools back to back on the same wall so that he could use the same stack and eliminate a lot of plumbing. He was also the first guy to ever put a sink and a tub into the room. He made it into a bathroom. Now before that, in, in uh, England, they called it a water closet because they put a toilet in a little closet and they ran water to it and they called it a water closet. But Elgin Statler made it into a bathroom. And we today have taken those same principles and we've refined them and improved on them. And we've brought the toilet down to the common ordinary man. Everybody has one in his own home today. And the pain and suffering that we've alleviated by making those toilets readily accessible is incalculable. You can't calculate it. Listen, I want to tell you that the toilet is something that you don't miss until you're without it. If your lights go out, you can light a lantern or a candle. If your air conditioner goes off, you can start a fan. But if your toilet is plugged up and you've got a wife and a house full of kids, you're in big trouble. And you know, my, uh, uh, their uh, women are not like men and they're not going to go behind the garage and, and urinate like a man would. And they're not going to go down to the corner filling station when they feel the need to defecate. No, you're in big trouble. And you know, my daughter, <clears throat> uh, Cheryl, went to Europe with her college choir a few years back. And when she got off the bus in France, she said, where are the bathrooms? And they pointed to the bushes and she said, I thought the interpreter didn't get it right. So I asked again, where are the bathrooms? And they pointed to the bushes and she said, no wonder they have to wash the streets every day, they have to. 
And if you were old enough to remember the old outhouse, you would realize what a boon this has been to mankind. And you know, you've heard of SAE, SAE bolts and SAE oil. SAE stands for Society of Automotive Engineers, and the Society of Automotive Engineers held a convention a few years back, and they voted the toilet one of the 10 most important inventions of all time. It's right up there with the lever and the wheel. And, uh, you know, they, they used to say that uh, all you need to know to be a plumber is that shit won't run uphill and that payday's on Friday, but that's no longer true. Today, we have toilets that flush uphill and we have inclining compost toilets. And I even ran across the toilet while vacationing a few years back on top of the Rocky Mountains in Estes Park, Colorado, just a few hundred yards from the Great Divide that was run by hydraulic oil. Because they couldn't pipe water there, they used hydraulic oil and they ran it through a filter and they used it over and over and over again and it was clean and it was sightly and it was sanitary and it worked perfectly well on top of the Rocky Mountains. And today we're putting toilets in planes and cranes and ships and buses and we're even putting them in rockets to the moon. And for me to have a part in that great ongoing saga makes me proud. I hold my head up high. And I throw out my chest and I don't take a back seat to anyone. But when people ask me what I do for a living, I tell them that I install those technologically advanced toilets for the Union Pacific Railroad. And when I'm done telling them this story, I notice a look of admiration on their faces that wasn't there previously. And sometimes when I'm just thinking about all of this, my heart begins to beat wildly and I get a lump in my throat and this feeling of uncontrollable pride sweeps over me and I begin to strut. And so if you see me strutting up and down, you'll know that it's not because I think I'm any better than you are, it's because of this uncontrollable pride I have in what I do for a living. Now, we haven't reached the very pinnacle of success. There are uh, improvements that can be made. For instance, the American public is getting taller and taller and taller, and some people have to sit with their knees clear up under their chin. And, and you know, the toilet as we know it today is totally unsuitable for male urination. However, overall, we have perhaps done more uh, to eliminate pain and suffering, to eliminate disease and pestilence than any other group outside of doctors. That's why uh, I compare myself to a doctor. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is in order to do my job, you gotta really know your shit.